What's going on YouTube? So I decided to make this video partly, number one, to just inform you guys as to some of the things that are going on with the channel, and number two, because I got a new camera and I'm just dying to test it out. So um, I got this new Canon EOS M50, and right now I'm using the kit lens, although I just bought another lens that should really uh, make the videos look a whole lot better. But I was using a Panasonic Lumix G7, which I sold um, for $700 with all of my lenses. And then I had, uh, the G7 was for vlogging, and my Canon 7D was for taking photos. So I had a really big um, DSLR camera, and then I had a much smaller Micro Four Thirds camera. One was for vlogging, one was for pictures. And I decided, when I saw the Canon EOS M50, and the price of, uh, I got it brand new for like $549, which is insane. I was like, all right, time to sell it. So I sold my Canon uh, 7D on Craigslist for uh, 400 bucks. I sold my G7 with two lenses, a 25 millimeter prime, 1.8, and then a, uh, what was it, a 15 to 140, I think, millimeter um, kit lens. Uh, sold it for seven, so I made twelve hundred bucks, and then I bought this one for five forty nine, and I just spent uh, one hundred and eighty nine dollars um, because Amazon gave me a new credit card. They gave me like seventy dollars off the price of the lens as a gift for getting the Amazon Prime credit card or whatever. So there you go. We've got a new vlogging setup. Now, not important. Most of you aren't going to care about that, and I understand, but I wanted to throw it out there because there are some of you that are camera fanatic fanatics, and for the first time, well, one of the first times ever, I'm actually using my Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. Um, I rarely use this thing because on the Panasonic, the sound was not good, and hopefully the sound comes out on this, so we're going to be doing this video again. Now, let's STFU about the stupid camera stuff. Um, let's talk about Let's talk about, let's talk about today. We could just start with it. You want to talk about drama? You guys want a soap opera? I got one for you. Um, today, uh, the cruise is rented out for until September 7th, starting tomorrow. The Prius is rented out to like September 5th. So both these cars are going to be gone, you know, for close to two weeks. And the great thing is, is the money they're going to bring in during that time is going to pay the entire month's car payment for both of them. Um, so that's awesome. So there was some maintenance that needed done. The crews needed an oil change. The crews needed the tires rotated and balanced. The Prius also needed an oil change, also needed the tires rotated and balanced. Both cars also needed an alignment. Not needed, but I get an alignment every six to 10,000 miles because I have lifetime alignments at Firestone. So we're at Firestone getting the, uh, the wheel alignment done. I was like, you know what? Let's just save some time and have them do the oil changes while we're here. Well, the Prius was no issue. They come back and they tell me, man, someone at Walmart is stripped out your drain plug. And I'm just like, great. Because up until I took it to Firestone and attempted to get an oil change on it at Firestone, it has been serviced exclusively by Walmart on time. All the oil changes have been done on time for the last 40,000 miles and two and a half years at Walmart. So nobody has touched that engine other than Walmart in the last 40,000 miles. So I go back to Walmart, right? Firestone couldn't, they wouldn't touch it. Um, so I go back to Walmart, Walmart looks at it and says that they think Firestone may have done it when they put a wrench on it or something. And I'm like, I've been using Firestone for years. Uh, I've only had one issue with them in all that time. And that was recently on the RX-8 where they overfilled the oil and left the original filter on it. Other than that, never had a problem. And when they've told me something was wrong with my car, I bring it home, climb under it, and sure enough, what they said was wrong, has been wrong. On point. So I don't think this was a Firestone thing. Um, so the guy says, no problem, we'll change your oil. It's not a big deal. And I said, okay, good deal. The next time I'm in here, I will bring a new drain plug. So when you change it, we can just put a new drain plug in it. I bought a new drain plug for $23. $23 for a factory AC Delco drain plug on eBay. Um, <laughs> and then the guy comes back and he says, we have a problem. He said, we put our wrench on it and it rounded off the rest of the bolt. We can't change your oil and now it needs to go to a shop. And I'm just like, 
Okay, okay, understood. The cruise does not have the oil, it has the oil minder. It doesn't have like a routine maintenance. It's basically when the oil thing comes on the dash telling you to change it, you need to change it. Well, right now it says oil change required soon. So we haven't crossed that threshold yet and I am using Mobile One high mileage full synthetic. So we're good there. So I made sure the oil was topped off. Walmart did put a new filter in it. Um, and we're gonna send it off that way. When it comes back, I'm gonna have to pull it off the Toro platform for a little while, and then it's gonna have to go to a shop to find out, can they just replace the drain plug? Or are they going to have to replace the entire oil pan? That's, that's to start with. That's just, that's the beginning. The Mercedes is at Firestone right now. They got the alignment done. Uh, so the, the Mercedes should be good to go. It does have an ever so slight leak that, uh, that it's ABC fluid that's leaking, but it's not leaking badly. Um, I, 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 I don't know if the seals are swelling back up because it's been actually being started and used or um, if the seals had shrunk because it had sat for a couple years. I, I don't know what the deal is, but the leak started out not that bad, but definitely noticeable. And now it's down to, you're seeing just a few drops on the ground every day. So it, the leak is getting better, just to me seems a little strange, but I'm happy about that. So the ABC leak has gotten a lot better. Um, next, we need to work on the coils. Now I found a link on eBay to a guy that says he will rebuild and warranty the coil pack. So he will rebuild the coil pack for 349 bucks. And I pay shipping to him, then he pays shipping back to me. He's got 100% feedback, although he has no feedback when it comes to these coil packs. All kinds of other parts for Mercedes, but none relating to a coil pack. So 349 seems like the best deal I'm gonna find. I think it's just time to bite the bullet and let's send this coil pack off. He offers a, uh, I think it's a, a one year warranty on the coils he replaces and a 30 day warranty on the entire coil pack when he sends it back. So um, I think I got that wrong. I don't remember. Basically, if I remember correctly, it's like you get a one year warranty on his parts and labor and a 30 day warranty on the rest of the coil pack. I can't remember, but anyway, it's $349. And we have said from the beginning this Mercedes was like a budget buy and it's a budget fix. You know, we did everything we could ourselves with the coil pack or something. Everybody's asked me to do it myself. There are um, little chips on the surface of the board that you have to desolder and then you have to resolder them perfectly because if you don't, you will burn through the board. I do not have enough experience soldering. I can solder most anything. But when you're talking about a multi-layer PCB, it is really easy to get it too hot and burn through the traces and ultimately burn through other traces throughout the motherboard because it is actually a layered board instead of a board with just a few basically wires that are traces, but wires running through it. Um, this one has a whole lot. This is a very complicated board and without the proper equipment, it's really easy to damage. If I damage it and then it can't be repaired, well, then you're looking at buying a brand new one. So I think we're just going to order the repair service, ship this off, get it back, and then we'll put it back together. Fingers crossed, all will be right with the car. Um, next, God, the video's already running long, isn't it? Moving on from that, what's going on with the, with the uh, state of Oklahoma? What's going on with car lots? What's going on with going to Copart and buying another car? You know, why haven't we seen another car? Okay, let's jump into that. We're gonna make it real quick. Um, the deal with the car lot is I've actually had several people, and I, I again, I want to thank all of you that sent me emails offering to, to work with me and, and help me figure this out. Basically, right now, I am going to do some work, at least that's the intention, with uh, uh, Weird Beard Auto Sales. He's working on getting his business started I have run an entire dealership by myself and was very successful at it in the past. So I think he has the dealership. I have a ton of experience. So I think between the two of us, I think, I think it'll be good for his lot and it'll be good for me as well. So I think we're really going to be able to help each other there. Now that may not be a permanent arrangement. Um, I have received a very generous offer from somebody in the state of Washington who has a five-star dealership 
who is looking for a little bit more than just, hey, you can use my license. He would like to actually work with me. And I would like to work with him as well. The problem is it's in Washington. Uh, that sounds like a, a really promising opportunity. So again, I wanna thank everyone for giving me the opportunity. But at the end of the day, it looks like I really need to focus on immediately right now, I am in Oklahoma. And I have an opportunity to help this guy build his dealership. He has an opportunity to help me, you know, not get in trouble with the law. So I think that works out for both of us. By doing so, by, by registering with Copart as a dealer now, um, I will get great discounts. At the same time, selling as a dealer, instead of selling at private party, I could sell these cars at retail. So win-win on that. And I, I hopefully can show him a little bit about Copart, show him around Copart, IAA. Um, I think he's really gonna like it. So that is what we're gonna do now, is I'm actually going this weekend to speak with him to see his dealership and you know discuss what we can, can work out that's gonna work for both of us. But ultimately, my personal goal is to get to the Oregon slash Washington market. Um, TK, if you're watching this video, brother, do me a favor. Could you shoot me an email or a text? I sent an email a couple days ago. Um, I have been having some issues with my email. I'm using Microsoft Outlook on a MacBook Pro. I don't know what the deal is, but uh, I've had emails sent to me that I just haven't gotten, and I, 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 it's really frustrating. Um, but TK, I think you've got my number, man. If you want to shoot me a text or something, uh, that would be awesome. So, uh, aside from that, somebody has offered me a place to live out there, like a house, an extra house that they're not using. And that would put me in the Portland area. Uh, not in Portland, outside of Portland, but still in the Portland area, not too far from where this guy's dealership is. And then we could work together. And I think that could be great. I, I really do. And, and ultimately, I think where I'm going with this channel, and let me tell you something about YouTube. You can start out doing one thing, and before you know it, you're just, you're being thrown for a loop, man. It's like, YouTube is almost like a tidal wave. You know, it picks you up and it carries you so far, and then it drops you. And then another one comes by and picks you up. You don't ever know where you're gonna be. So we started out as Uberman, now we're auto auction rebuilds. And I think ultimately, and I'm surprised that I'm even saying this, but I think my goal for this channel and for you guys is going to be to open my own dealership at some point. Um, or open a dealership maybe with the guy that's in Washington. Maybe he wants to, you know, go in with me. We can do this in the Oregon market or something. I think I'd, I'd like to have my own, my own store. And I, I really, I can't believe I'm saying this because I, I swear I don't want a dealership, but now I feel like, I feel like I do. And I feel like you guys, I, I, I imagine this experience. We started out just buying, fixing, and flipping cars, right? But what if we go all the way? What if we take this to the next level? Buying cars, fixing cars, selling cars, getting in trouble with the state, all right? And then going through the process of opening your own lot, of actually having my own storefront with my own cars. You guys can go the whole way with me from scratch. We go from nothing to opening the doors to a car lot, and then I can share the entire experience, the entire process, how much it costs, because you know I'm transparent. What has to be done? I could share all of that with you, and I would love for you guys to come along on this journey with me, because I really think that's the, direct, that's the direction I'm going. And the money on YouTube is pretty phenomenal. Not for me, not yet, but I'm not going to name names. I want to I want to point you guys to a a website called Social Blade. All right, Social Blade. You can type in your favorite YouTuber's name and you can find out how much they make. And I'm going to let you in on a little secret. I have like four or five YouTube channels and I know how much I make from each of those because it pays out monthly. When I put in my YouTube channel's name, it pulls it up and I can see how much it says I get paid compared to what I actually get paid. 
And what I actually get paid is always on the high side of what Social Blade says. Social Blade, if you type in like auto auction rebuilds and click on it, Social Blade will say that I make anywhere from, uh, I don't know, like $300 a month up to $6,000 a month. So Social Blade is usually very accurate. I was just giving an example here. I don't even remember exactly how much it says I make, but you can usually, at least with all of my channels, Assume that it's on the high side of what Social Blade says, and you'll be really close in that ballpark. So you can type in your favorite YouTuber, and from my experience, just go on the high side, and you can see, well, I don't want to, I'm not going to name names, but you can see what these people make. And I think when you see what people make on YouTube, you will be flabbergasted. Because I am sitting here with 75,000 subscribers right now. And my channel will typically bring in, I know it varies, but between $3,000 a month and $6,000 a month. Typically, typically, it's more around the $3,000 a month. Um, but there are months where it, pull, it jumps up to $6,000 for some unknown reason. Now, I'm watching, as time goes on, my, my income go up. And I'm thinking to myself, I, I'm not trying to get rich, but I typed in a lot of different YouTube channel names, popular car people on YouTube. And when I saw the monthly earnings, I was like, some of these people are making half a million dollars a year. Now, I've never been a greedy guy, and I don't anticipate ever becoming greedy. That's, that's just, that's not in my nature. I'm a pretty humble guy for the most part. I like my cars and stuff, but um, I see that kind of money. And I'm like, why can't I do that? I don't need to make half a million a year. What I need to make is 150 to 170,000 a year. And according to YouTube, YouTube, or not YouTube, I'm sorry, Social Blade predicts that I will be sitting past the 100,000 subscriber mark um, by January. And in approximately 10 months, my channel will hit uh, something like 140 or 150,000 subscribers. At that point, I should be able to live solely off of YouTube, off of making my videos. And that's all I want. It, it, I'm not going to say I don't ever want to get rich or make half a million a year. I would be a liar if I said I don't want it. But that's not what I'm striving for. What I'm striving for is to be able to do what I love and support myself and be independent from anything else. You know, not need anything else other than what I do for a living and be able to live a reasonable and comfortable life off that. And that is my goal for this channel, is to bring you guys along because this is going to be a hell of a ride, but we're going to do it. I'm a fighter. I'm determined that we're going to make this happen. And it just so happens that at this crucial stage in my channel's growth is when Oklahoma wants to come in and put the hammer down on me. It's not happening. Let, I'm telling you, it's not happening. I am not giving up. I am not going away. And I don't care what it takes. I am going to fight to make this channel what I want it to be and bring the best that I can bring to you guys. Um, now, with that being said, the video's already hitting almost 20 minutes, so we're going to get out of here. I just wanted to share my ideas. I wanted to share what's happening in my life right now and of course, I wanted to share the update with the Chevy Cruze, and we still have work to do the, to the Prius that we haven't done. We, we, could, we need to do like proper maintenance on the Prius. We need to get to that at some point, but that damn Mercedes is eating me alive, man. As far as more cars on the channel, not yet. Not yet. I know it's, it's believe me, I'm used to getting a car like every two weeks, and I'm itching right now. I just don't have the money since I got back from vacation, things are going to be a little tight around here for a while, so I'm doing the best I can. Um, we'll figure out another car in the future. Right now, we need to get the Mercedes done. That's what we need to do, and it needs to go up for sale, because that car is going to bring, I think, a pretty decent profit. Even though I did not buy it with the intent of making a profit, I bought it with the intent of making videos. All right, I do believe the Mercedes is going to bring a pretty decent profit, so I need to get it done. We need to get it sold, and then we can worry about uh, finding something else. If you think the video looks better, I know a lot of you probably don't care and don't even pay attention, but if you think the video looks better right now than usual, 
uh, give the video a thumbs up. If you want to join me on this journey of building a car dealership from scratch, give this video a thumbs up. I'm really curious to see what you guys think. If you're, if you're ready, if you want to go on this journey with me and learn, as I do, about the whole process of getting started from absolute scratch, give that video a thumbs up. I certainly appreciate it. Comment your thoughts and your opinions below. Please, for the love of God, be respectful. Trash talking and just being ignorant will get you blocked. That simple. Um, I don't have time for it. I got some good people in my corner. You know, this guy here in Oklahoma that's willing to work with me. We got a gentleman in Washington willing to work with me. And then there's Rick Dyer, who I hope to be interviewing on this channel in the very near future. I don't think I can lose. So let's, let's do it. Like the video, comment below. Be sure to subscribe, click that bell icon if you haven't already so you can be informed of future videos as soon as they pop up. Stay safe out there, everybody. I love you guys. I will catch you very soon in the next one.